Hey, we are in 2 Chronicles chapters 31 and 32. And uh, remember, we just had uh, the Passover. People were coming not just from uh, the uh, northern tribes, but the southern tribes and everybody's being involved that wants to be. And here now we find that there has been a revival in the land. Uh, not only in Jerusalem, but the surrounding cities all the way going north. Uh, so big things have been happening. Hezekiah is on a roll. Uh, and we're going to see that. And then we're going to see some things that take place. Some of them we are not going to cover as much because we covered them in Second Kings. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into uh, the text. Chapter 31, New International Version. When all this had ended, the Israelites who were there went out to the towns of Judah, smashed the sacred stones, cut down the Asherah poles. They destroyed the high places and the altars throughout Judah and Benjamin and in Ephraim and Manasseh. After they had destroyed all of them, the Israelites returned to their own towns and to their own property. Hezekiah assigned the priests and Levites to divisions of each of them according to their duties as priests or Levites to offer burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, to minister, to give thanks, and to sing praises at the gates of the Lord's dwelling. The king contributed from his own possessions for the morning and evening burnt offerings and for the burnt offerings on the Sabbath, at the new moons, and at appointed festivals as written in the law of the Lord. He ordered the people living in Jerusalem to give a portion due to the priests and Levites so they could devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the order went out, the Israelites generously gave the first fruits of their grain, new wine, olive oil, and honey, and all that the fields produced. They brought a great amount, a tithe of everything. The people of Israel and Judah who lived in the towns of Judah also brought a tithe of their herds and flocks and a tithe of the holy things dedicated to the Lord their God, and they piled them in heaps. They began doing this in the third month and finished in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and his officials came and saw the heaps, they praised the Lord and blessed his people Israel. Hezekiah asked the priests and Levites about the heaps, and Azariah, the chief priest from the family of Zadok, answered, Since the people began to bring their contributions to the temple of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and plenty to spare, because the Lord has blessed his people, and this great amount is left over. Hezekiah gave orders to prepare storerooms in the temple of the Lord, and this was done. Then they faithfully brought in the contributions, tithes, and dedicated gifts. Kananiah, a Levite, was the overseer in charge of these things, and his brother Shimei was next in rank. Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Asahil, Jeremoth, Jozabad, Elil, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were assistants of Kananiah, and Shimei, his brother. All these served by appointment of King Hezekiah and Azra, and the official in charge of the temple of God. Kor, son of Imna, the Levite, keeper of the east gate, was in charge of the free will offerings given to God, distributing the contributions made to the Lord and also the consecrated gifts. Eden, Meniamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah assisted him faithfully in the towns of the priests, distributing to their fellow priests according to their divisions, old and young alike. In addition, they distributed to the males three years old or more whose names were in the genealogical records, all who would enter the temple of the Lord to perform the daily duties of their various tasks according to their responsibilities and their divisions. And they distributed to the priests enrolled by their families in the genealogical records, and likewise to the Levites, 20 years old or more, according to their responsibilities and their divisions. They include all the little ones, the wives, and the sons and daughters of the whole community listed in their ge these genealogical records, for they were faithful in consecrating themselves. As for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who lived on the farmlands around their towns or in other towns, men were designated by name to distribute portions to every male among them and to all who were recorded in the genealogies of the Levites. This is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah doing what was good and right and faithful before the Lord is God, in everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and in obedience to the law and the commands, he sought his God and worked wholeheartedly, and so he prospered. After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified cities 
thinking to conquer them for himself. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. They gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the streams that flowed through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water, they said. Then he worked hard, repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. He built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. He also made large numbers of weapons and shields. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encouraged them with these words. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him, for there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said. Later, when Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and all his forces were laying siege to Lachish, he sent his officers to Jerusalem with this message for Hezekiah, king of Judah, and for all the people of Judah who were there. This is what Sennacherib, king of Assyria, says. On what are you basing your confidence that you remain in Jerusalem under siege? When Hezekiah says the Lord our God will save us from the land of the king of Assyria, he is misleading you to let you die of hunger and thirst. Did not Hezekiah himself remove this God's high places and altars, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before one altar and burn sacrifices on it? Do you now not know that what I and my predecessors have done to all the people of the other lands? Were the gods of those nations ever able to deliver their land from my hand? Who of all the gods of these nations that my predecessors destroyed has been able to save his people from me? Now then, can, you, can your God deliver you from my hand? Now do not let Hezekiah deceive you and mislead you like this. Do not believe him, for no God of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my predecessors. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Sennacherib's officers spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. The king also wrote letters ridiculing the Lord, the God of Israel, and saying this against him. Just as the gods of the peoples of other lands did not rescue their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not rescue his people from my hand. Then they called out in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to terrify them and make them afraid in order to ca capture the city. They spoke about the God of Jerusalem as they did about the gods of the other peoples of the world, the work of human hands. King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer in heaven about this. And the Lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. So he withdrew to his own land in disgrace. And when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all the others. He took care of them on every side. Many brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and valuable gifts for Hezekiah, king of Judah. From then on, he was highly regarded by all nations. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death, and he prayed to the Lord, who answered him and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah's heart was proud, and he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Therefore, the Lord's wrath was on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah repented of the pride of his heart, as did the people of Jerusalem. Therefore, the Lord's wrath did not come on them during the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great wealth and honor, and he made treasuries for his silver and gold and for his precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuables. He also made buildings to store the harvest grain, new wine and olive oil, and he made stalls for various kinds of cattle and pens for the flocks. He built villages and acquired great numbers of flocks and herds, for God had gave him, given him very great riches. It was Hezekiah who blocked the upper outlet of the Gihon spring and channeled the water down to the west side of the city of David. He succeeded in everything he undertook. But when envoys were sent by the rulers of Babylon to ask him about the miraculous sign that had occurred in the land, God left him to test him 
and to know everything that was in his heart. The other events of Hezekiah's reign and his acts of devotion are written in the vision of the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Hezekiah rested with his ancestors and was buried on the hill where the tombs of David's descendants are. All Judah and the people of Israel honored him when he died, and Manasseh, his son, succeeded him as king. Now, the life of Sennacherib, I referred to uh, a little bit in 2 Kings. I also wanted to show you, uh, this was a wall relief, um, and it's the portable, uh, it represents the portable throne of Sennacherib uh, that he, because he was a conquering king, he went everywhere, and he ruled uh, on the run uh, because he was conquering so many nations and so many uh, other nations were afraid of him. A lot of, of that is found in the British Museum, uh, that, that relief. Um, Chronicles doesn't mention, mention the fact that um, King Hezekiah tried to get help from the king of Egypt, but he wasn't able to do that. And then God comes in and wipes out uh, Sennacherib's army. So that was, a, that was a big deal. And in fact, uh, archaeologists have found uh, near Lachish, uh, remnants of 1,500, uh, a massive grave of 1,500 people uh, there under the rule of Sennacherib. So a lot of things were going on. Uh, he was a famous, famous priest that was taking place. But here's what we see, and we're going to see this over and over, and we really see it in our lives, is that uh, Hezekiah was on a roll. And uh, when you get on a roll for God, it also makes you super vulnerable. And I've mentioned this before. Then we see King Sennacherib come in and just try to knock Hezekiah off and uh, try to persuade the people to say, hey, you don't know what you're doing. You don't, you don't know what kind of God you're following. Uh, and so we see uh, the upside and we see the downsides of of our feelings when we follow god so the cool the the goal is to stay faithful uh to be faithful in the little things so that when the big things happen uh we're ready uh to do whatever god wants us to do have a great day